Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Today, I want to answer a couple of questions about Superbase and Firebase. A lot of persons get to ask me, which is preferable? Is it Superbase? Is it Firebase? Is it Xano? But today, I don't want to talk about Xano. I want to show you through Superbase and Firebase. As you know, Fairflow comes with Firebase integration. Directly, that's the default, and now you can use Superbase for your mobile application, which is super cool. So, a couple of things that you basically have to know is the similarities between both of them. Firebase is a backend as a service, and so also is Superbase. Superbase is a backend as a service, it just means that you can do almost everything, everything you want to do in your application, you, you can create database, you can read database, you can delete database, you can do so many things with your application without writing a single line of code. All you have to do is to create it here on Superbase and then call the API directly in your application. That's it. So every every time you create a table on Superbase, you get an API a URL. You get a, a URL that you can use to read, to create, to delete, and to update data in that particular table. You understand, right? Same thing with Firebase. Firebase, you don't really get and you don't really get the APIs directly, but you can make this request if you know how to code. But when you use Flutterflow, Flutterflow does it does all the stuff for you behind the scene. So it does everything for you behind the scene, and you don't have to um, you don't have to do any of those things yourself. But be rest assured that both of them are back in as a service so that's the reason why you you don't just create just uh, you don't just create database only when you're working with firebase you can create so many things you can do messaging you can add plugins extensions you can send push notifications you can have storage buckets so many things why because it's trying everything that you get to do on your on your hosting platform you know everything you try to write everything you try to give your developer to write firebase is doing everything for you and all you have to do is to plug and play. Now, another thing that comes up in the discussion always is the pricing. Hey, Paul, which of this is going to, which of this is cheaper for me? Which of this is not cheap for me? The thing that you have to understand that getting started with both Firebase and Superbase is free. You don't have to pay anything when you're trying to get started with Firebase and Superbase. You, everything is free. But there are a couple of things that you want to do, then you would have to upgrade your, your, your application. For example, if you're looking forward to deploying a custom function on Firebase, you have to op upload, you have to upgrade it to the pay as you go service. You have to move from the Spark plan all the way to the Bliss plan if you want to deploy custom functions. You have to do so. And also, if you're working with Flutterflow, you will figure that there are some things that you want to do with Firebase right off the bat that you really can't do with Flutterflow. For example, the other day I was building a live streaming application and integrating Muse. It wouldn't work as long as I use Superbase as my database. It only works when I use when I use um, Firebase as my database. Why? Because some of these things. Why? Because most of the of the of the functions in Flutterflow is built directly with Firebase. It's built to integrate directly with Firebase. So Superbase is something that is just coming along the hood and it's making sense. So feel free to integrate both. Feel free to integrate your app with Superbase and Firebase all at the same time. Yes, you can do so. You can do so. You just have to make, uh, authenticate with Firebase, create your own Firebase collection, and work with that. So for your authentication, you can use Firebase for that so that you can work with most of the integrations you have in Flutterflow. But for other things like data storage, then you can go ahead and use Superbase. So that's for that. But one thing about both platforms is that they are very generous when it comes to the free things. They are very generous. And you can see Superbase provides you all of these things, authentications, uh, Cloudfire store. The only thing it doesn't provide you in the free plan is the cloud functions. It doesn't provide you this in the cloud functions at all. And then you have all of this cloud storage, 
hosting, all of this, you have all of this at no cost. The only thing you don't have at, you don't have is just the cloud function. But you see all of this? Yes, you have to pay for all of this. On the, on the base plan, select plan, you basically have to pay. So the reason why, in terms of cost, I would say that Superbase is cheaper is this. So we're going back here, pricing. Look at the pricing. We have $25 a month, and you can upgrade as you go. Yeah, you can always upgrade as you go. So if you hit your limit, you get to pay a little bit more as you go when you hit your limit. Yeah. But the thing is this. When you're working with Firebase, you pay for every read and you pay for every write. So you pay for everything. You pay for when, whenever there's a read, whenever there's a write, whenever there's an update in your entire database, you get to pay. And so that's, those stuff happen every time in your application and your bucket can, can become very full as you go. Where it starts to get very dicey a bit is that Firebase charge you for every read, for every write, and for every delete. And that can be very unpredictable. It can be very, very unpredictable as to how many persons are going to be writing to your application, how many reads are going to happen, and how many deletes is going to happen. And the thing is that Firebase have a way of updating everything in your database. When you're trying to display a table, it displays everything. It updates everything. So if you have a thousand records, you update all the 1,000 records at the same time, which can be crazy, which can be terrible for your, for your pocket. But you see, for Superbase, the only thing that Superbase charge you for is the total amount of data stored. You get it right. So if you are not using your, if you are not storing a whole lot in your um, Superbase, in your Superbase database, you're not being charged a lot. Yeah. So if you, the more you store, the more you're charged. But compared to Firebase, which is a bit different. For Superbase, you can find, you can write cloud functions, custom functions to reduce the storage units that you're using to reduce your image size, your video size, compress. So you can do a lot of things around it in order to make sure that you are not using too much when you're working with um, Superbase. And one good thing about Superbase is that you have unlimited number of art. So that means if you're authenticating users, you have unlimited number of art. And also you have unlimited number of API requests. You can make as many API requests as you want. That's some of the cool thing about using Superbase. So let's get inside all of this. So you would basically see when you're inside here, you see this is the database. This is where you will be chilling the most. This is where you're going to be chilling the most, the database. This is where everything is going to be created for you, collections and the rest. So another difference between Firebase and Superbase is that Superbase stores data in table. It, it uses the MySQL framework to store this data. So uh, MySQL is structured query language, and you can always write MySQL query on your table. So you can see we have this table. We have streams. So this is a table. It is nothing, nothing else. It is just a table. And we have this, which is a table. We have list of users. This is a table. So that's the way it stores it. It, it stores things with a table, and we have this relationship with unique key. So like you can see on my screen now, the stream table and the to-do list table will have this relationship with a stream key, with a with a unique ID. So the unique ID here is the user. And if we go back to the stream key, you will see that the unique ID is also the user. So basically, that's how I could tell who's creating a stream and who's not creating a stream because of the unique ID. But why for Firebase? Firebase stores things as document reference. That's the way it stores things. If you want to if you want to um if you want to store two things at the same time, then you have to use a document reference. It uses document reference, it uses you know sub documents, it uses references to store things together. So it's pretty unstructured. But the thing is as long as you can relate the reference among two things, those things can be as can be can be assessed on the base level. You just need to be able to say the reference, this reference is belongs to here and this other reference belongs to this. And that's basically the way they store data. But in terms of performance, yeah, in terms of performance, according to research done by Superbase themselves, don't take my word for it, but this research was done by Superbase themselves. Um, it was figured that Superbase had performed Firebase by 4x. Yeah, when it comes to reading records, like, you know, reading a list, Superbase does perform Firebase by 4x. And when it comes to writing, 
Superbase does add perform Firebase by 3.1x per second, right? 3.1x per second. So that means in terms of um, reading, Superbase is 4x faster, and in terms of writing, um, Superbase is 3x faster compared to Firebase. So that's basically it. It's your pick now. It's you who will determine what to pick. I've laid everything out to you. I've laid everything out to you in terms of structure, in terms of how you, in terms of structure, in terms of pricing, and in terms of performance. It's you who will choose it. And also, it depends also on the background you're coming from. If you're coming from a MySQL background, I would say stick with Superbase. But if you're coming from a Firebase background, just stick with Firebase and create wonders, magic, which are for the floor. So thank you. That's it. If you if you have a topic in mind that you want me to cover, feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll do well to cover it. And also you want to learn more about Flutterflow, click on the link below to to get started with my Flutterflow Mastery course. I'm so sure you will enjoy it. We've gotten a whole lot of testimony. And also if you want to build your application, you need someone to build your application, click on the link below again and I'll be able to do that for you. I'll see you in the next lesson where we discuss again Flutterflow. I'll see you then.